Thanks, Victor. Thanks again. We're going to move on to Dr. Ali Hade, who is, a, a, I heard him speak Spanish earlier, <laughs> but he's yes. Palestinian and works for the UN uh, Relief and Works Agency, yes. uh, which, as you know, is, uh, is the agency uh, mandated to assist Palestinians and Palestinian refugees around the region. Um, and uh, he is uh, going to talk to us about how they monitor uh, NCD patients in that context. Uh, we're going to get your slides. Good afternoon. First of all, thanks to the organizer for inviting me to this very interesting uh, symposium. Uh, I will try to present uh, the work that we are doing in UNRWA, especially in the field of the NCD care, and uh, particular attention I will give to the cohort monitoring system that we introduced in our NCD care since 2000, 2012. UNRWA stands for United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East. And UNRWA was established 68 years ago. The first map shows the Palestine under British mandate from 1920 to 1948. The second map was the UN partition plan of Palestine between the Jews and the Arabs, uh, after which the first Arab-Israeli war started, and as a result of that, almost three-quarter of Palestinians fled their homelands and cities and become refugees. After that, UNRWA was created by the UN General Assembly in 1949 and started operation in May 1950. Nowadays, UNRWA is, pro is we, we have 5.7 million Palestinian refugees registered in our, in our system of registration, and the healthcare system is providing primary healthcare through a net of 143 clinics distributed across five regions, Gaza, West Bank, Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. What, what we are providing in the NCD care, we have long standing experience in the NCD care delivery. We started that in 1990, and since that time we are providing, we are it is, it is an integral part of our primary health care system. We do screening for diabetes and hypertension for all patients, all visitors, 40 years and more, coming to, to our clinics, and also for other patients or other, other visitors who have risk factors. We provide diagnostic di diagnosis, treatment, and care for NCD, including laboratory tests and medication and health education. All of these services are provided free of charge for the NCD patient and others. We have established surveillance system. We have a, a system of recording and reporting and annual assessment. We have a clinical audit uh, for diabetes care. We conducted so far two rounds of, of audit, one in 2012 and th another one in 2015. We have standard technical guidelines since the establishment of the program and it was last updated in 2009. Currently, we are working to integrate mental health and psychosocial support into our, our primary health care. This slide shows the burden of NCD, NCD on our population. So far, we have almost a quarter million patients with diabetes and or hypertension registered in our clinics and coming regularly, regularly to us. The NCD care was boosted and received good support after the implementation of the movement towards the family health team model. Mm, that, that was started in 2012. Uh, before that, we used to have vertical program in our clinic and our services used to be uh, divided into different programs. Mm, NCD program, maternal health care program, child health program, and so on. Um, after that, after 2012, we moved to uh, the comprehensive person-centered continuous care model. And also, the introduction of the, elec the electronic medical record at the same time almost also was, was an important fund advancement in the NCD care. What is the, the cohort monitoring system that we do have? It is a structured programmatic framework for NCD assessment and management in the health center. 
It draws on global experience from TB, our director, Dr. Saita, who, who used to be uh, the director of TB, and HIV from Dr. Harris. It was developed jointly with the International Union Against TB and Lung Disease, the Union. It is joint work between two different sections, the health section and the IT section. Why we introduced cohort monitoring? Simply, there are two difficult questions for any healthcare provider. How many patients you are serving and what happened to those patients? The cohort monitoring legitimately and rightly respond to those two important questions. This is an example. If we look, for example, in one, in one quarter in a small clinic, we we, we, we diagnosed and uh, 119 patients, uh, we, could, we could trace them and see what happened to them after one year, what happened to them after one, two years, or after three years, and go on, and so on. We could trace patients on, on retrospect or on, on prospect. I will show you some example, uh, some, some, some important example on, on the what type of report that we produce through the cohort monitoring system. For example, we have data, we have registration data that give us information about our patients, how many, how many they are, and what are the main characteristics of those patients. We call it the community registration cohort. It gives you all the ever, ever registered patients in, in registered in one health center. This is the, the type of report that we can get from through the, the cumulative registration cohort. And we can, we can get this information from different clinics, from different regions, and also from different fields, like that. As you can see, this is, this is community cohort registration for six clinics. <coughs> What's more t most important, the cohort monitoring also will give, will give us, or will provide us with information about the, out the outcome of care and the, the, the service delivered to those people. For example, we can get the cumulative cohort outcome. We can get information about the number who are remaining in care, what treatment they are taking, what measurements have been done to them, and what complication they get during this period of time. Also, we can do some sort of survival analysis also to monitor the care. We can follow up easily those registered during one quarter or one year and trace them on prospect to see what happened to them. And we can do that for many years. Then from the cohort monitoring, what we can get? We can get information about all our patients, all the ever registered patients. We can, th through the cumulative cohort registration report or cumulative cohort outcome or, com or co cumulative cohort analysis for more than one clinic. Also, we can get information about those registered during a specific period or quarter of time. And also, we can do the survival analysis. Also, we can get information about those who attended the clinic or those who did not attend the clinic and what happened to those who did not attend, if they come again or, or they are lost to follow. Information on registered patients is important for planning, for staffing, for forecasting of drug consumption and consumer risk. Trends in access to care by comparing disease burden in the clinic with disease burden in the community. We get information on outcome is important for also for the quality of care. This is, this is a, a, a screenshot from the, uh, the electronic medical record, how easy we can get this report. 
just we click into and report on, on reports then we go to the to the to the list of reports <coughs> we, we we select the quarterly cohort registration and simply we can get this data in, in either in, in excel word or pdf and this is it's 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 only in, in one or two minutes the 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 doctor in the clinic can get this type of information about his patients We published so far five papers on this. In conclusion, Cohort NS is a comprehensive system that provides information on continuity of care necessary for management of NCD. This is key issue in the management of NCD. Continuity of care is the key issue. With electronic medical record, court reporting have become much easier and faster to produce. So far, it is now a standard reporting system in our, in our healthcare. And we are considering to expand the court monitoring to other programs like MCH, family planning, and child care. With the electronic medical record, we are so now so we have a wealth of data that need to be uh, to be analyzed and to be used and to be presented to the scientific circle. For that, we will come all researcher to come to us and to to work with us jointly because we have all data that can be shared. And so far we have a memorandum of understanding with London School and we will come any collaboration with all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks, Ali. That was very, very impressive, I must say. Um, uh, any clarification questions for Ali? Yes, one up there. Uh, oh, great, there's a microphone. And one even further up. Thank you. Um, yeah, I'm uh, Olivier Mezou. I work with MSF and some programs in the in the Middle East. And um, I would like to know if to implement the the patient electronic file. Um, I mean, knowing based on MSF experience, the difficulties we have sometimes to have a good, um, I would say, a collection of information in medical files. Did you have a specific uh, plan to, to with doctors and medical staff, you know, to to make sure that all the information is collected and properly registered? Well, yeah, yeah. I think that you pointed out one of the important challenges that we faced during the implementation of the electronic medical record. This is one of the challenges we have faced. So many challenges. Yes, at the beginning, yes, we have. We have problems with data entry, the accuracy of this data, the completeness of medical record, and so far still, still existing, but we are improving. Thank you. One more question up there. Yeah, and then we'll move on. Hello, I'm A.V. Mansfry from working with MSF on NCDs in the Middle East as well. Um, it's a very similar question. It was just to ask who was entering the data. Were they entering it directly into an electronic record, or, there's, or is there any paper involved at all? No. data collection oh yeah no it is it is fully computerized system the data is entered by the health staff who are providing services thank you thank you again Ali, and uh, we'll come back to your presentation i'm sure